Does your backswing look something like that, where you get very, very narrow, gets very long, that right arm over folds, and ultimately it produces a very inconsistent strike and golf swing? Well, if so, then you're in the right place, because I'm going to show you how to correctly move that right arm in the backswing today so you can get proper width. You do not want to miss this video. Walking down the driving range or playing with your buddies, I'm sure you have seen that golfer where they overfold their trail arm. It's such a common issue. It gets the hands and arms disconnected with the body. It takes away all your width. And ultimately from there, you're going to have to be making compensations in the downswing, which are going to result in poor golf shots. Now, what is width? Firstly, let's define that. Well, width is how far away from the body your hands are. The more we start to bend this trail arm, the closer my hands are going to get to my chest. And you can see at the top, if I really start to fold them, they are very close to my right shoulder. Now, if I wanted more width, what I would have to do is actually push my hands a little bit more away from me. Now, as I did that, you can see that changes the structure. Now, why is width important and why is having no width detrimental? Well, like I said, when we have no width, the hands and arms are now working independently from the body. We are disconnected and from there, we are gonna have to then make compensations in the downswing. Versus when we have good width, the club tends to want to work back on a good plane. We get in a great structure at the top of the backswing. We tend to find the hands and arms stay synchronized with the body, which then means we can sequence our body in the downswing the correct way. Now, why do people get into these poor positions with the right arm? Why do they overfold it? Well, it happens for a couple of reasons. Number one, we see people don't turn enough with their body. So they might be moving laterally with their hips. So as a result, they don't get a full hip turn. See, they might be restricting a lot with that trail leg and they might be going, well, I want to lengthen my swing to get a little bit more speed. So what do I do? They then fold their arms. So both of these reasons, whether it be they can't turn enough or they're trying to lengthen their swing are going to cause you to have to overfold that trail arm, lose width, and ultimately from there, it's going to put you in a worse position. If you are that golfer who is restricting the lower body, who is moving laterally, then you need to check out my five minutes a day to the perfect rotation video, which I'll leave up here. Now, if you are that golfer who is now turning really, really well, and you think actually getting more of the arms to fold, getting a longer swing is going to generate you more speed, then we need to get rid of that concept. There are plenty of ways that are far more efficient and going to result in better ball striking that are going to allow you to increase your club head speed than getting that club longer at the top. We need to go about it a different way. And again, stay tuned for future videos that are going to help you with that. So now let's start to have a look at what amateurs do versus pros. And we look through some of the concepts that we're trying to tackle when generating more width in the backswing. So the first thing we've got to look at is setup. What do we see the amateurs do and what do we see the pros do? Well, at address, it is very, very common in an effort to maintain more width, the amateurs will go and really straighten out their trail arm. They'll kind of lock it out in this position. Now, I understand this because this is sort of a method of going, right, where if I want to get more width, I'm going to straighten this out. I'm going to try and keep it as wide as possible. But believe it or not, it sort of has the opposite effect because when we lock out that trail arm, our bodies are going to go, well, we've got to fold the arm at some point. Otherwise, we're just going to sort of swing back to here and we're going to look very very robotic and not generate any speed. So what it does is when you lock out the arm, it actually causes you to then react and overfold that trail arm at the top of the backswing. Now, if most amateurs lock out their arm at address, what do we see with most pros? Well, most pros actually have a little bit of bend in there. Again, I'll give you the number. It's around 14 degrees as average. Some players are a little bit less towards 10. Some players are a little bit more towards 18. But in simple terms, the arm is very relaxed. And we actually will see that at address, that right elbow, that trail elbow is a little bit more tucked in towards the rib cage. Now, this is sort of counterintuitive, right? A lot of people think to have width, we've got to lock out that arm. But actually, when we have a soft amount of bend in that trail arm, well, not only does this help us with our grip pressure because it allows us to really relax over the ball, it actually helps us generate more width in the backswing. Because again, we're not having to unlock any motions. We're not having to relax the arm in the backswing. It's already in a nice relaxed position. It's got a soft amount of bend there. We can then just focus on turning and maintaining good width with that trail arm. Now, what do we see in the backswing in terms of numbers? So a number that gets thrown around a lot at the top of the backswing is 90 degrees. We need to fold this right arm 90 degrees. Now, in reality, with most amateurs, we see they overfold this arm way past 90 degrees. We're talking 100, 110, 
120, even sometimes 130 degrees. This is where they're really collapsing those arms. And as a result, you can see the hands get very close to the body. We don't have any width anymore. When we flip it the other way and we look at the pros, we don't actually see many pros get to 90 degrees. So this sort of number of 90 degrees is really the upper limit we want to be seeing of how much that right arm should bend, that trail arm should bend. So with most pros at the top of the backswing, considering they start at, let's say, 14 degrees, they might only get to 70, 80 degrees of arm bend at the top. So they're not even close to 90 degrees. Now, as a result of this, you can see this keeps this trail arm in a really nice position. It keeps the width there, which allows the club then to shallow out really nice in downswing. Ultimately, then you can sequence your body. So now we know what we're looking for. Firstly, we need a little bit of soft bend of the dress. Secondly, at the top of the backswing, we're not even trying to get to 90 degrees. You can use 90 degrees as your upper limit number, but I want you to actually feel like you're a little bit less. How can we train this? Well, let's run through some drills that are gonna massively help you. So now let's run through some drills that are gonna help you train this new sensation of width now that we understand how much we're trying to bend this trail arm. So the first thing that I want you to do is just at the address position, like I said earlier, is just take your grip, bring your right hand up in front of you. Imagine you're shaking hands with somebody and just feel that soft amount of fold right there. Once you've done that, try and keep that elbow into that rib cage like you've done. Just gently bring it back down and you'll notice you'll have a soft amount of right arm bends right there. This is going to put you in a way better position. You're going to feel a lot more relaxed as well with that right arm. And essentially this is going to set us up into a position to where we can start to get into a great top of the back swing position. So once you've done that, now let's move on to the split hands drill. Now this is one of my favorite drills because we can do it out on the golf course. And any drill that we can do on the golf course is gonna help us in our pre-shot routine. So what I want you to do is grip the club normally with your left hand and then just hinge the club up about a foot or two off the ground. Now from there, take your trail hand and just grip it uh, so your hand is 50% on the shaft, 50% on the grip. Now again, in this position, the left arm is gonna stay straight, but the right arm wants to be nice and relaxed in this spot. From there, just make a backswing where you turn back and you feel like that right hand is just pushing away from you on the club. Now, as you do that, because the hands are split, it's gonna be a lot easier to get some width into that right arm. Now, is this an over-exaggeration? Of course, it's a massive over-exaggeration, but it's exactly what we want to be feeling because over-exaggerations help us learn this new movement pattern faster. So split hands drill, do a couple of these, do a couple, three of these. You'll feel that trail arm bend subtly, but it's not gonna be anywhere close to 90 degrees. In fact, it might only bend 50, 60 degrees, something like that if I was to put a number on it. And then let's do it one more time to the top. You'll notice that there is a big distance between my chest and the grip. If I was to collapse this trail arm, you can see the grip and the chest are now a lot closer. We do not want to be seeing that. We want to be seeing a good amount of width right there. Again, this is going to be a very powerful move. It's going to cause us to get a good amount of rotation. And as you can see with the split hands drill, it's actually going to get me into a great structure at the top of the backswing. It's also going to get me into a great rotational position as well. So it's really going to help me with my rotation. Now, once you've done that a couple of times, we're then going to place two hands on the grip. The sensation I want you to have is as you're swinging back, is that your right arm is sort of pushing away on the club. You can see my right palm is sort of pushing away on the club. This is gonna help us generate this little bit more width. Now, you might have seen another drill, it's called the, the wall drill, where you're gonna put your hands on the wall, you're gonna feel like you push them away. This is just a different variation of it to where we are swinging back and we're feeling our right hand sort of push away the whole time on the club. This is what's going to allow us to generate that width. And as we're doing that split hands drill, it's gonna really sort of follow in nicely because we're gonna feel that trail arm pushing on the club away from us generating that width. Now, once you've done that a couple of times, like I said, place your hands on the grip, feel that trail arm push nice and wide on the way back and then just swing all the way through. Do a couple of swings like that and you're gonna feel a lot more width at the top of the back swing. Now this doesn't just apply with the irons, in fact it applies with the driver and if anything it's even more important with the driver, width is crucial to great driving. Look at Rory, one of the best drivers of the golf ball out there has a huge amount of width, especially in the backswing. Now we can also do this split hands drill with the driver, so set up to the drive, from there hike the club up, left arm nice and straight, right arm's going to be 50-50 on the grip and the shaft. As we turn to the top we're going to feel that nice big width, we're going to feel like we're pushing away on the shaft right there, that's going to get us into a great position. Do that a couple of times for me. Just feel what it feels like to generate that great width. 
Again, you might see your swing shorten off, but you're gonna notice you're gonna turn more. The hands and arms are gonna be in a great relationship relative to the body. And then from there, you're going to be able to shallow that club out because having good width is crucial for shallowing the club out and therefore hitting the ball a long way. Like I said, look at Rory, great width, hits the ball a mile. Also look at John Rahm. He has a shorter swing, but he has great width and again, hits the ball a long way. Now, once you've done that a couple times, slide your right hand on normally, do some rehearsal swings again, where you feel like that right arm is pushing away from you. From there, that's gonna put you in a great position at the top of the backswing, to then where you can hit up on the ball and ultimately hit some great drives. So now we've gone through why width is so important and what you're looking for, especially with that trail arm. Again, use that reference guide of 90 degrees being the absolute maximum you wanna fold your arm. If anything, you wanna be a little bit wider than 90 degrees. I see so many players overfold it and it kills their goal swing. Also at address, be very mindful of how much arm bend you have there. We don't wanna be locked down. We want it to be nice and soft. This is gonna help relieve some tension in your swing, but it's also gonna set up your backswing. So hopefully you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give it a like and subscribe. I hope to see you back here soon.